Hey y'all, this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so I am back tonight because I'm going to make the sewing machine mat. Um, I've had several requests for this and I wanted to make this anyway because I wanted to take one to my mom tomorrow. So um, let me just show you quickly how to make this. This is super simple. Um, I'm going to have to stop and start because I don't want the video to be way too long. But I just want to give you um, the most information I can on how to make this. Okay, so what I have done is I have already squared up my fabric and I have this measuring ad and I'll tell you exactly. I have my fabric at 22 inches by pretty much 22. So 22 by 22 or a little bit hair off. So you can, you can measure this and make this as wide as you want or as short as you want. That's up to you. But I like mine to hang off. And so if I, if I measure, measure it in the length here by 22, that gives me plenty of room to put it under the sewing machine and have plenty of room for the pockets that's going to be down here at the bottom. So the first thing that I did is I went ahead and I squared up my fabric and this is on the fold and I went ahead and didn't even cut the fold. I didn't feel the need to cut the fold over here. So I just went ahead and squared up. So really I've only got three open sides. And I went ahead and of course my, my fabric is two pieces. And I went ahead and I squared up some batting and put it into the center. You can use high loft, low loft, whatever kind of batting that you want to use. So once you get it all squared up, then the best thing to do is probably put some pins all the way around because you want to be able to hold this in place. So I'm going to put some random pins just to hold it in place. And then we're going to do some machine quilting on this. Just kind of put some random ones just kind of around. Just so we, whenever we're sewing this, we can um, keep this in place. And then as you're sewing, you know, as you're sewing, then we can, um, you'll just, of course, pull the pins out. Okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about putting some in the center. Okay, maybe I'll do one. You guys know I'm so iffy. Um, I got a lot of response on my craft room tour, y'all. I hope y'all got a kick out of that. Um, yeah, it was pretty fun. Okay, so I put some pins, random all the way around to hold hold the batting in place. And now let me get myself set up at the sewing machine. I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got it underneath my sewing machine, my presser foot here. And I am going to sew a seam all the way around the outside just to hold, just to hold the batting in place so I can remove my pins. So just kind of line up maybe about a, about a quarter inch or so away from the edge of your fabric. And let's just start sewing all the way around to get my thread under there. I've just got white thread and when I put my bias tape on the end, I will change it over to, to a blue. I don't know, it just depends if it's gonna show through my bias tape. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to sew this all the way around. just so I can keep this in place and keep my batting there. Just remember, I mean, if you're new to sewing, I mean, this doesn't have to be so straight. It's going under bias tape anyway, and we're gonna trim off this excess batting that's sticking out anyway. I'm just trying to hold this in place. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay, when you get down to the edge, I have a I have a needle down function on my on my machine. If you don't, just kind of put your needle down in there and just pivot your fabric around so you can start going down this other side. Whenever I cut my fabric, I usually use my rotary cutter. Uh, my rotary cutter looks like this, and I keep it super close over here by my sewing machine. Sometimes I gotta tighten it back up. 
But yeah, this is my rotary cutter. It's, I'm pretty faithful using that one. I keep it pretty close. And we're gonna keep going. Remove your needles as you go. If you're a sewer, you already know this. I guess that's what you're calling a sewer. Um, seamstress? A seamstress to me does clothing. I don't do clothing. I do crafty things and that's about it. Okay, got it down here and I'm gonna pivot around on this other side. Take out my needles as I go. I can go ahead and remove this one. I cut I cut the batting a little bit larger than the fabric so that way I can, if it kind of shrinks up underneath there, you can just trim it off, that's all. I actually made this up one day, the pad I'm using under my sewing machine. I made it up about a year ago, I had shingles. And so I would wake up in the morning with, you know, and I'd have all this energy. And so I'd come in here and sew because I couldn't go anywhere or do anything, I had shingles. And then by lunchtime, I would have to go lay down and take a nap because I would just be exhausted. It would just hit me after lunch. I don't know, have y'all ever had shingles? It wasn't fun. I'm grateful it did never come back though because you know my doctor had said you know it could come back and even one of the nurses I work with said you know it could come back and if it does we'll come back in the same spot okay we're at a corner and this is the side that I had just folded the fabric but I'm gonna go ahead and sew that because I want it to hold the hold the bedding in place and now we're on the last side And I'm going to go ahead and remove my pin over here and just sew this straight up. And one last pin. And the nice thing about these mats is I don't know if you, I guess you can't see it. I don't have my camera right on there, but I just stick my pins in the top of the mat and it keeps me from knocking the pins off on the floor and stepping on them. And then when I'm done, I put them in my pin cushion. Okay, so we made it all the way around. And I'm just going to trim my threads. And now you can choose to to change your thread and make it the same color as your fabric. And as you see, this is a really cute sewing machine type fabric. I'm just gonna leave it white. There is a little spats of white in here, so I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so now what you're gonna need to do, now that you have this sewed all the way around, you need to quilt this. And so you can quilt, if you're a quilter and you know how to make designs, go for it. Um, but uh, the the way I do it is easiest way as I just start sewing up and down like every couple inches and I'll sew it like like horizontal and portrait horizontal and landscape I guess that's what it is but that's what I'll do um, for this one now the one that I have on my machine or under my machine I did sew those at a diagonal I guess I could do that. Hmm. Do I want to do that? I always have to think about these things. I think I'll do it at a diagonal. And when I do it at a diagonal, I start at one point, work my way over to the other side, and then I just keep going to work my way out. Just so I can try to make sure I get it straight. Now I do have my machine, my sewing machine set at a 2.5 um, stitch length. And this is just an average straight stitch. Another pin in there. So I'll just show you guys how I how I do this, and then um, I'll finish off camera and then come back and show you what's next. Cause you got to do the quilting part before you put your pockets on. Okay. Make sure you're keeping it kind of flat. You want to make sure that your batting doesn't kind of curl up a little bit, even though you have it sewed down. 
Okay, so I've got one all the way across, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over a couple of inches. You can see I've got my stitch right there. I'm gonna go over a couple of inches and sew right up next to it. Okay, so I'm gonna start. That way then, it, all this really does is give it a, makes it pretty and it just um, holds your batting in place. Now I've got my next row. So now I have two and I'm gonna go over here and sew another one, sew the other ones and go on the other diagonal. I'll be right back when I'm done with that. Okay y'all, so I'm back and I have sewed like four or five lines at each diagonal on my fabric to hold everything in place and then I press this down. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we need to make our pockets. And I'm just using this fat quarter. And what I did is I went ahead and I kinda of trimmed it up because fat quarters aren't always totally even. And I have it ironed in half. You wanna keep the you wanna keep it in half. You don't wanna trim off the back or anything. Keep it in half. The, next, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew a seam all the way down the top to kinda of give it a little trim. So let me do that and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm getting ready. I'm gonna sew just straight down the top of this where the fold is. Use the edge of your fabric as a guide so you can have a straight stitch or as straight as you can get it. Mine aren't always straight. I just do the best I can. So this all the way down because we want to have this nice little stitch going along the top. You could also put a little piece of batting in between this, but I didn't do that with the, my other one that I'm using now under my sewing machine, and it turned out just wonderful anyway. So I don't really think you need it, but you can do that if you'd like. Okay, so did you see here I sewed a seam all the way down the top? And now I'm just gonna get this all lined up on the top of my fabric. Okay, so you see I've got it laying on the end of my fabric, and of course if it's directional print, make sure you put your pocket at the correct end of your, of your mat that you're making. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pins and I'm gonna pin this all the way around just to hold it in place till I get it stitched on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is sew here across the bottom and up to here. Make sure you back, back stitch at the beginning and end because you know these sides of these pockets get a lot of wear and you don't want them to tear. You don't want them to come loose. So I'm just going to get this all pinned and get that sewed. And we will be real close to done. This is the easiest thing ever. This, this is what happens when I had shingles and I had nothing to do and I was kind of bored. I sewed. Okay, so I've got it pinned. As you see, I've got it pinned here. After I sew around here, back stitching at the beginning and end, then I'm going to sew myself some lines like every four or five inches. And I'm going to make myself, let me see how many pockets I got on this one. I did five. So kind of make, try to try to just distance out how big you want your pockets. Like if you want one that's gonna be a little smaller, that maybe is for ink pens, or maybe some bigger, that's up to you. But I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do five pockets. So therefore, let me see how many seams I sewed. One, two, three, four. So you will sew four seams down the middle, which makes five pockets. Okay, okay. so here we go. Get the string underneath my uh, presser foot here. I'm going to use my down feature on my machine and I'm going to sew this straight down. Now I have this a little bit longer on this end so I will trim this off but I can kind of feel where my fabric is underneath and my batting so I'm just kind of going by feeling it here. 
when I get to the bottom, I'm going to turn it. Okay, I'm going to have to move y'all back just a tad there. Okay, hopefully I didn't jar you too much. Okay, I'm going to take out my pen. Set this all the way down the bottom. Okay. One time, y'all, let me tell you this while I'm sewing. Watch your fingers when you sew. I was sewing tote bags, and we were getting ready to go visit my husband's family in Las Vegas. And as I was trying to finish up this tote bag, I was sewing so fast. It was on my other machine that I used to have. I was sewing so fast and I was doing so good. I was literally on like the last three seams of this, this tote bag. And my finger, as I went up there, my finger got caught and literally the needle went through my, through my fingernail out the other side. Oh my goodness, y'all. That hurt so bad. Luckily, we have the need, the release thing where you can bring the needle back up on the machine that I was using then. And yeah, I pulled that right out. But the problem is, is I had thread going through my finger out the other side and back up. Oh my goodness, y'all. Be careful when you sew. I learned to try to keep my fingers not too close and try not to go too fast all the time. So when that happened, my husband, he was in the shower at the time, and my first thought is, help me! So what did I do? I started screaming for my husband, help me! And he came running out of the shower, soap all over his head, and he saw what happened. He goes, just keep your hand elevated. Just keep it elevated. So I did. He finished wrenched off. He hurried up and put his clothes on. And we knew that either I needed to go to the ER or I needed to uh, get that thread out. So what did he do? He, he, after he told me, he said, look the other way. And he trimmed the thread on one end and he went <clears throat> and pulled it out. Oh my goodness, that hurt so bad. And it bled so bad. Oh my goodness. Yeah, be careful, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to start. This is going to be my first of four seams that I'm going to sew. So at the top, all the way from the from the bottom to the top, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Real important to back stitch because this gets a lot of wear and tear. Try to sew as straight as you can if you need to use a ruler and draw yourself some lines with like a pin that will erase or whatever, then go ahead and do that. Try to keep your fabric as smooth as you can. But yeah, I won't I don't I won't do that one again. Okay, I'm doing my back stitching. Bring my needle up. I have a little pucker right there, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's all good. Because I'm going to iron it, and that'll be better. Now I'm going to move over a couple of inches. And I'm going to move over. I think I'll do about like that. And then I'll do one, one here and then here. So that's over about four inches. Don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Straight up. If you want to use some decorative stitching on this, you can do that. I just prefer, like, for a project like this, it's a straight stitch. I think I have, like, oh, I don't know, probably 200 different stitches on here on this machine, and I always just use zigzag or this one. This is all I need, really. It just happened to come with it. And actually, the reason I got this sewing machine is because it has a big throat space. That's why I chose this. I have tried quilting. I'm not a great quilter, but I try. Okay, this is going to be my third, and then I'll have one more. So I'm going to go over, start over about right here. Put my thread underneath. 
back stitch and straight on up I'm gonna guide your fabric to the top back stitch okay that way then you've reinforced those that pockets okay we move it over we're coming to the home stretch of our pocket then all we have to do is the bias tape okay so this is going to be a pretty big pocket on this end but you know my mom has lots of scissors and stuff so that will be good okay back stitch yeah so the moral of my story is y'all don't sew too fast and get your fingers caught because i've done that and you know what after my husband got that out within eh, 30 minutes when it starts bleeding i was back to sewing luckily it didn't ruin the bag i was making yeah oh my goodness i've never done that again i always try to be more careful at least it didn't scare me to not sew anymore because some people it probably would scare them to not want to sew if something like that happened okay so let me just show you i've got to trim my threads but i have one pocket two pocket three pocket four pocket five pocket so i've got a little bit larger ones over here these could hold pins or whatever like if she has ink pens or something. Okay, so now we're gonna get the bias tape on here. So let me just show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so I have ironed over where my pocket was because I like it to be nice and flat as flat as I can make it. And now we're gonna put some bias tape. I am using double fold bias tape. I got this at Joann Fabrics. You can get it at Walmart and get it at any, pretty much any craft store. Um, but I got mine at Joann Fabrics. I went in and picked up two because I don't know if one will be enough and it probably will be, but just in case, I grabbed two. Now, how I start putting my bias tape is I always start putting mine on the side. And what I did is I started by just putting it underneath and where the fold is, I fold it over and try to make it as easy as I can. And then I just pin it down and you're gonna do this going all the way around. Now the corners are a little tricky. You can see the corners. So when you get to the corners, just go ahead and just kind of leave it kind of like a fold and just kind of, if that, if that makes sense to you. You're gonna put it underneath, put it as close to that corner as you can, and then put that over it where you're gonna have a little flap right there and just pin that in place. We will fix these as we go. I'm gonna keep pinning the way here. Just make sure you got it, put it up as close to your fabric as you can. That way then you know that your bias tape is even on the top and bottom. And pin really good all the way around. And now what I did while ago is I trimmed off the excess. That way then it'd be nice and I could put it nice and flush up against there and it is even as I can get it. Okay. Get over here. I'm gonna turn it so I have room to work. I'm gonna make my way around, and actually I think one would do it. I had some pink, I really wished I could have put pink, and I should have grabbed a pink when I went in, because I grabbed a dark blue and a light blue, I didn't know which one I wanted to use, but I think I'll do the light blue here. Um, but I had some pink, actually, pink right here, and I wished I would have had enough for that one, I would have did pink on it since I did the polka dots, but it's okay. It's all good. My mama will still love it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going all the way around. I'm gonna 
make sure I put ample pins just to make sure I've got it in place. And then we're gonna sew slowly all the way around. And then we'll fix these corners as we go. The corners is the hardest part. It's not hard, but it's the hardest part. Okay, we're almost up here. I'm getting close. Turn it. Move the chicken out of the way. I've had several people want to know how to make the chicken, so I will show y'all how to make the chicken maybe the next time. Maybe in the next day or so. I love my chicken, and he's fast and easy, and he holds my pins. In fact, my mom needs a chicken, too. Okay, we're coming to the home stretch of pinning the bias tape on. Yep, y'all. Make sure you're careful when you sew. Don't sew your fingers. I already did that and it didn't feel good. I mean, you can just picture, I can just picture my husband running out of the bathroom with soap all over his head. And my husband's from the Philippines, so his head is pretty, is, is brown, you know, and he shaves his head. And he had been shaving his head and he had soap all over, or shaving stuff all over his head from running out. Yeah, that was a fun, fun time. Tote bag turned out good, though. That's what matters. Nice little tote bag. Because I took, took nice big old tote bags to my sister-in-law's when we went to Vegas. So, okay, we're on to the last part. We're only going to need a little bit. I'm going to trim this off. Okay. Just get this corner. Make sure you get this folded over. As you see, the corners are kind of kind of puffed up here. That's okay. We're going to fix that. And then I'm going to get over here. We come into the home stretch. I love my table here. The only time I don't love it is if I'm bending over. Okay, so I've got it a little extra long. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim it. Trim it up a little bit. I'm gonna fold it, that way then I have a little hem here. I don't want any raw edge. And I'm just gonna poke it underneath. I'm gonna pull this pin out so I can get it all pinned down. And then we're gonna start sewing. We have almost got ourselves a mat, y'all. Okay, so there you go. I've got it all pinned. When we get to the corners, we're going to take it and we're just going to kind of push the bias tape underneath until we can have it like at an angle at the corner and then we'll sew that down. And we got to make sure that it's like that on both sides. So you're going to make sure they end up like this. And you can kind of press those down as you're going, as you're sewing around. Okay, so let's get on to the home stretch, y'all. We're almost done. Okay, so this is the last, this is the home stretch. We're gonna get this bias tape sewed on. Now I am starting sewing over here where I joined my bias tapes together. That's where I, I choose to start. Make sure that your bias tape is even because you've got a double layer there, so I'm kind of pushing it under because I wanna have it as easy, even as I can. And then I'm just gonna start sewing about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my bias tape. And it's thicker, it's layer, extra layers, so it's okay. But just go slow. You can do a zigzag around here if you like. That'd be really pretty to do. Or you can do the straight stitch like I'm doing. Just as you take your pins off, hold everything in place. Just go all the way around. Now 
You don't want to go too fast. You want to make sure you're grabbing those layers. I'm going to make sure that my bias tape is all situated the way I want it uh, for this corner that's coming up. I'm going to move my pen over. I'm going to make sure my bias tape is flush. Maybe make sure that I have it, the bias tape kind of folded at an angle underneath. You can go back and fix your corners after you're done if you like, or you can fix them now. Um, I kind of just kind of play it by ear. Sometimes it's easier just to go fix them after you're done. Um, let me see here. You want to make sure you're going to grab that bias tape. Get it on that fold. If you're going to fix it now, just kind of pivot. Sew the corner. Some people don't sew it. I've seen like people not sewing that, but I kind of choose to do that. And, and you could stop right there and move your thread. I'm just going to turn my project and just go back. So there's my first corner. If you've never used bias tape before and you've never done your corners, just practice. Practice on a scrap. Okay, so now I'm going to go down this side, and yeah, we'll be done before you know it. Hardest part is the corners. Just make sure we kind of even. A nice zigzag would have looked nice. I should have used a zigzag. Oh, well, next time. You can hear the machine because it's having to do extra duty because it's pretty thick. It's going through one, two, three, four, about seven layers, about six or seven layers. So it's doing its work. corner again. I'm going to make sure my underneath looks good. And then I'm going to make sure the top looks good. Try to make them flush against each other. And go to that corner. Grab that side. Remember, nothing's perfect, y'all. Do the best you can. I'm going to sew down to my corner slowly. You can turn your project or you can backspace. I'm just going to turn my project. Because I like to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm going to finish going along the last two, last two sides. And then I will show you what we ended up with. Okay? Be back. Okay. So I have finished trimming my threads. And I put my uh, little hole punch thingy there to kind of hold it so it hangs off. So I want you to see what it looks like. There you go, what it is. It will hang off the edge of your sewing area or your sewing table. And you can put your, I already have a pair of scissors that's stuck in here. There's five pockets. You can see right there, there's five pockets. And you can actually, you can put pins, whatever. Um, let's see how I got you could put all kinds of stuff in here. And it's great for your sewing machine. And yeah, I think my mom is gonna love it. Got it a little crooked now. But anyway, sorry about the end like this. I normally don't stand here and hold my phone while I'm showing you the project, but I wanted you to see what it looks like hanging off the edge of the table, which is the way it wants. I'm real happy with the way it came out. See how the corners turned out? You can see how the corners turned out. They're pretty good. Just, just iron this part down, y'all. But yeah, 
that is the sewing mat. I hope that you like it. Yeah, I think my mom will love it. She's gonna love it. And it's gonna be real helpful for her because she has crippling arthritis and she can't sew all the time. And this is gonna really help her to be able to put her utensils there where she can reach them and it won't hurt her hands while she's trying to pick them up out of some workplace that's maybe a, not a good reach for her. So I think that she'll like this. So anyway, yep, um, there you go. Now, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys back again soon. But before I go, um, there is a very sweet lady that's been writing me. Her name is, no I think, Noni. Noni. And she actually has been making some bowl koozies to put in her craft fair. I'm so proud of her. But I'm going to insert a picture here of what her bowl cozy looks like. She did a great job. And she says she's already made like six of them. And so I'm really proud of her. She's just, she's just doing so well. She said it was so easy to do. So I hope you guys will give that a chance too, as well as this really neat sewing machine mat. Or you can use this for so many different things. Um, you know, it could go under a Cricut. You could put your Cricut supplies there. Whatever you want. It doesn't have to be used just for a sewing machine. Anyway, well, um, I hope you like this, and y'all, I hope you enjoy a picture of Noni's Bowl Koozie I'm inserting right here. Okay, so y'all have a great night, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!